Dan, barring any big acquisitions, the question on Apple seems to be, do they succeed in shifting the narrative away from iPhone units and toward some, I guess, general profit growth statistic, the idea that they can keep iPhone prices high, build in services, and keep that momentum going. What's it going to take for them to be able to do that? Look, I mean, the big thing here is the services business. I mean, they're trying to get the street away from sort of the car, a hardware piece, looking at services. But ultimately, I think the way that they did it was a disaster in terms of pulling the iPhone metrics. I think right here, the first thing they need to do is obviously in the December, you need to have a cut for March within the streets anticipating. And you really need to convince the street that it's an install-based story for 2019. But it needs to be about upgrades. And right now, if I look at 10R so far, that's been real disappointing in China. So this is kind of a one-two punch. You need to see the upgrades, specifically in China and the U.S. You need to see price cuts. And then it starts to be a services story. Right now, it's a guilty till proven innocent stock. Uh, Tim, do, do you agree that Apple kind of fumbled the, the shift in how they report iPhone units, I guess no longer reporting iPhone units, and how big a factor is China, I, I guess mainland China, or greater China, I should say, was about 20% of Apple's sales in fiscal 2018. How, how much is this trade talk going to play into Apple's action at the beginning of the year? Well, look, the trade talks are clearly having an impact on Apple's multiple. It's like all these shoppers down on Fifth Avenue right now. It's after Christmas. Everybody's looking for a deal. Apple's trading below 12 times earnings, uh, forward earnings right now. This is, if you look at the 10-year stock chart, there's been three occurrences where Apple has traded at this level, and it's related to the iPhone, um, and it's related to the iPhone slowdown. It's related to the trade war in China. Um, I think that, that the opportunity here um, is that, like, if the last time that Apple was, was trading at this low of a multiple was back in 2016, and that was when China um, was reporting revenue growth around negative 16%. Um, today, the difference is that growth is coming from wearables, it's coming from price hikes, and most importantly, it's coming from services. And with Apple about to disclose services for the first time ever, um, you know, we think that these are higher margin, higher multiple. We think that they deserve a higher multiple. And as services grows in importance over the next five years, we think gross margin could approach. Uh, we think that services could contribute 40 percent of total gross margin. We think the opportunity for investors heading into 2019 is that with Apple trading at this depressed multiple that takes into account fears about the trade war, fears about the iPhone, we think that there's an opportunity to share to actually re-rate higher. So that's, um, you know, that's, that's, I think, where the stock stands today. Dan, we're talking about Apple, but chip stocks, worst quarter in a decade. When it comes to tech more broadly, how crucial are these U.S.-China trade talks to the picture here in 2019? It's the linchpin. I mean, right now, if you look at the, the major black cloud over tax, specifically chip names, is the China talks, <laughs> tariffs, and disruption in the supply chain. That's why I think investors, you can't see a green light until you know where these trade talks are going, which is why the chips continue to be that sort of sell the rally. You're seeing more investors look at you know, called mm -hmm. software is more resilient space. It's not as it is impacted. But nonetheless, I mean, look, I can tell you in 20 years covering tech, this is as much of a white knuckle period as we've seen, just given the fork in the road on the China talks. Because that's not just for chips, networking, as well as the whole Apple ecosystem. And I think fundamentally, look, 20% of the iPhones in the window of an upgrade opportunity come from China. So it's not just Foxconn from the supply, it's a demand perspective. So it's a double whammy, which is why they have a bullseye in their back. I mean, it really feels like, Tim, that 2018 was a, was a tale of two, two years for tech stocks. I mean, you had these record highs. Fang was beloved for most of the year. And we, we were having a $1 trillion competition between Apple and Amazon. And then the end of the year, they've been among the hardest hit in this market around liquidity fears and tightening concerns and, and China trade, you name it. So 2019. Which of those dynamics is going to be in place? Well, look, you know, you're exactly right. It's been a tough tape for tech in the past couple months. We think that the tech trade is still on. Um, this deal with China, the trade war, is the focus right now. Um, the deadline for there is March 1st. So you've got a couple months, I think, before 
we get any clarity into how this um, how this will evolve. But we think they get a deal done. It's like what happened with the deal with China uh, between uh, the U.S. and Canada and Mexico. There's a lot of brinksmanship. At the end, they came forward with a deal. Right now, China's seeing the slowest GDP growth that they have in over a decade. We think that the U.S. is in the driver's seat. Um, there'll be a lot of chatter through March 1st, but we think they get a deal done. Um, we see a lot of growth left for these names, so we still like this. Okay. So, so, Dan, with stocks where they are now, tech stocks in particular, what is the market factoring in as far as this trade deal and, and what ends up happening or not happening uh, when the bell tolls March 1st? Is there more upside potential or downside potential from here? Look, I think it's more upside potential in terms of right now in the street, still a little bearish on that we're going to get full resolution. It's going to be a lingering issue. There's going to be a lot of, we'll call it a game of high stakes poker in terms of uh, what we're going to see on a tariff perspective. So I think there's an upside in terms of if you'll see a China uh, tariff sort of solution. But that's why right now, if you look over all across tech, you're really seeing on cloud names a big focus. You look at Google, GCP with Korean. You look at Amazon, AWS, and then obviously with Microsoft. So I think that's why I think investors are staying away from chip names and China exposed sectors, focusing on maybe some of the cloud names that are a little more resilient. But nonetheless, this is definitely going to be a sort of a, a you know bimodal situation in terms of where we see on China. Before I let you both go, Tim, you also cover uh, the gaming stocks. They're all down for 2018, but we get that news today that China's beginning to approve some video games after that long freeze for most of the year. Any names you like here at these levels? Look, we like Activision. Uh, we like Take-Two. These are two um, high-quality stocks. We think gaming is, uh, is a, is a long-term grower. We've seen generational growth, audiences bigger than ever. Uh, the shift to digital business models is driving more predictable and recurring revenue. So, um, you know, these, these names have been hit even harder um, than a name like Apple with, with stocks like Activision down over 40%. We think that, you know, these names uh, too are on sale. And look, the, the, China, gaming, um, the China, China gaming approval has been an overhang for the gaming sector. It's also been an overhang for Apple um, with the App Store revenue, you know, coming in at, at Apple making something like 75, 80% of App Store revenue coming from mobile gaming, so there's exposure there. But right. um, it was an overhang, and, and it's a positive that'll get, that'll get cleared up. And, and look, there's been no change in terms of the, the, the trajectory of gaming uh, in terms of a pastime. And, and now that these approvals are in place in China, you would expect uh, robust revenue um, through the first and second and third quarter into 2019.